this is what's called a submittal registry. When you first win a project, uh, and particularly construction, but in anything where you have to provide parts, components, solutions, chemicals, you've got to tell the government what you're using, right? Like you can't just show up and say, I'm going to use, you know, uh, generic bleach. They want to know what kind of bleach, what are the chemicals in the bleach, what does it do to the floors, the walls, uh, what happens if the bleach were to spill. You get me? Does that make sense? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So now let's take, let's take a look at on a recent project that we won here. Okay, this parking garage job. Uh, I don't know why I was hum. I didn't notice that about myself. All right, these pops, are, to be honest. So what? Pops, to be honest. Oh, it could be. So these are the specifications here on the right, 1,000 pages. And then on the left is are the submittal registry. So uh, how does this work? Oh, and then, of course, because I am the guy who likes to show you real-life examples, uh, it says... Let's go back in. Okay, this is the email received on August the 21st, and it says, Good morning, please see attached submittal log and RFI log that you may use for the Experience Garage Repair Project. I'm requesting to have the following submittals prior to scheduling a pre-construction meeting. So we've got to submit our schedule, accident prevention plan, quality control plan, list of subcontractors, and submittal registry. Let's, talk, let's save this. We'll talk about this another time. All right. So when you first start, and by the way, Brandon, do you remember uh, Kelly and Freshika? Yeah, I remember them. Okay. Mm -hmm. I trained them how to do all this stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I've been teaching this a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I taught them how to do it. Uh, and basically what happens is uh, when you're looking at here, your submittal log, so they're asking for quality plan, prevention plan. As you can see, their example comes from 2016, 2017. Uh -huh. But I always tell people, it doesn't matter. I guess folks say, well, Eric, that video is three years old. Does this still apply? Uh, yeah, the government's been doing this stuff the same way since the Cold War. So stuff oh, that's 10 years old still applies a lot of times. But nevertheless, moving on, when you hear when you submit this spreadsheet, it's used to really help you keep track of your submittals. Uh, and what that means is so that they can document, see where it says number, one, two, three, one, two, three, mm -hmm. four. Okay, spec section, uh, and then the submittal, description, dates, date return, and comments. So we'll go over all of those, those sections here. So when we look at the actual specifications, the specifications, that's what spec stands for, specifications section. Mm -hmm. All right. When you look here at the specifications, they are broken down by division. So you see on this left-hand side, divisions one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it goes all the way up to division 32, and then they have appendix. <laughs> and then you have these appendixes. Oh, man. So uh, when they say spec section, you see there, it says 01, that's division one, 02 is division two, 01, division one. Makes sense? Yep. Okay, so now, if, now when you click on division one and you go within one, they're referencing 014500. See that? 011100. So they're looking at 0145. So you can actually do two things. You can search it, 014500, and it comes up. So on the screen, you'll see 014500, right? 014500. Mm -hmm. This is the section. So this, when you see it at the top of the page, that's actually the top of that spec section, 014500, quality control. All right? Does it match up? Quality control, match up, boom, 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 right? Okay. So all these spec sections are searchable, uh, which makes it a lot easier to submit. Um, so now she says we need now that that spreadsheet this sheet is just an example so we're not it's not a great way to teach you how to start looking for the stuff and what they want right because the question is Eric how do I know what to submit to them right how do you know what to submit? Uh -huh. okay so now 
but this is the sheet that we're going to use to submit the information once we find it. Fair? Yeah. All right, so now let's look at what do we submit. All right, so we go over here, and that's what's called a submittal registry. A submittal registry is what the government sent us and says these are the things that we want you to submit. Okay? So this is their list of what they want to submit. Now, you don't have to submit everything on this list. It's 42 pages. All right. So what's the natural, the next natural question? So what do you know what to submit or not submit? Exactly. All right. So let's go back into our specs section. And your specifications is really the guideline of what you're supposed to do on the actual project. So this is your reference guide, and it gives you all of the answers to those types of questions. Um, now let's go in. And here's your table of content. And then here it talks about contracting requirements. And somewhere in here, when we get to the first division, here you go. This is the very first section, 011100. Okay, it matches up in our registry, right? 011100. Okay, and it says pre construction submittals. Now, can you see this paragraph? Is it big enough? I can zoom in. There you go. All right. Government approval is required for submittals with marked with a G designation. Let's go over here. You see those Gs? Mm -hmm. Those are all government approvals are required for those. All right. So everything here with a G, you have to submit to the government. So even though these other things are listed, the only ones you're submitting to the government are marked with G's. So the first thing will be 0114, contract regulations, transportation of personnel, list of contact personnel, personnel list, schedule of prices, location map. So these are all the things that you have to submit. Well, I'm actually happier because it's not everything, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, it makes it's a lot of things. It's a lot, it's a lot of things. Thing. So, so really, you know, it's not everything, everything, um, but it's still a lot of stuff. So that your question was, uh, you guys talked about this paperwork. I want to see this paperwork. Okay. Now, and her email, she asked for, boom, boom. she asked for these things. Accident prevention plan, quality control plan, list of subcontractors. All right, um, so a couple things you could do. We could compare what she's asking for here to see, mm -hmm. right? Because this is what she says we need to, in order to do our first kickoff meeting, we need these five things. Um, all right, so here we could compare to what they have on here, the list and see if you mm -hmm. see the prevention plan, or you can go right over to your specifications and just look it up. What I, I like to do, I just like to type it in here, accident, prevention, and you see how it starts matching up stuff? Yeah. So then here, look, accident prevention plan. All right, all right, let's go to the next, accident prevention plan. The accident prevention plan falls under section 013526. See that? Mm -hmm. All right. So the reason why I say it's not hard, Brent, is because you have a guide to follow. Does that make sense? Yeah, it basically tells you what, what, they, what they need from you. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's look at the accident prevention plan. It talks about providing a safe, safe, site and safety health officer. Uh, so the, for the safety program, the government accepted accident prevention plan, uh, competent persons, your accident prevention plan, accident prevention plan. Okay, here it is. So it says, a qualified person must prepare the written site-specific accident prevention plan, prepare your accident prevention plan in course with the format requirements for EM385. Uh, the exit must be job-specific and address any unusual or unique aspects of the project. To cover overall safety. Hold on. Let's keep going. 
and it says you must submit the accident prevention ban to the contracting officer. Okay. Um, so now, what, it, what one of the things that this particular specification does, and this is what I teach my people, and this is also one of the things that I say, Brandon, is if you can read and write, you can do government contracting. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> because no, it's true. Because really, all you you have to actually read this stuff, right? You can't, like people say, you can't BS folks. You can't try to like skip over. Like you gotta actually read. That's <laughs> so it says here. You have to follow the requirements of EM three eighty five. So when you read that, you've got to go in and look at EM three eighty five. So you have to actually go pull that up. All right. Okay, EM three eighty five. <laughs> Another nine hundred page document. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You asked me. You said, Brenda, what you what did you say about the paperwork?" I said, "I want to see the paperwork." Okay, we talk about the paperwork so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So here we are. Here's your uh, manual number three eighty five dash one dash one. Right. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> so you got one thousand page book that references another thousand page book. That's good. Do they have a specific part they want us to read? <laughs> they do. And that's the that's the beauty of this, is that uh they do have a part that they want you to read. They said uh prepare the plan in accordance with the format and requirements of three eighty five appendix A. See? So that's helpful. So now all we gotta do is find appendix A. Okay. All right, so let's search again. Appendix A, boom. For what? What do you get in Appendix A? Abbreviated Action Prevention Plan. So it's not exactly, you know, rocket science. But yes, you do you have to do the, it, I look at it as a choose your adventure book. You just have to keep going to that next adventure. Now where Makes is sense. Yeah, right? So let's look at Appendix A. <clears throat> Where is Appendix A? Appendix A, Appendix A, Appendix A. Keeps referencing Appendix A. When do we get to the, oh, there we go. Brandon, Appendix A. There we go. So now, listen, in fairness, we skipped through the first 788 pages. <laughs> and that's why I, I tell people that it's really, yes, it does seem very complicated, but if you just keep, if, it, if you treat it like a video game, Brandon, all you're doing is right going to the next section, the next, the next, what do you call it when you go into a, a room? You know, if you're in a game and you, you open a door and you go into a new room and you have the new, a new battle, like with the, 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 let's say you're shooting, I don't know, the, the space monster things. Like realms? Yeah, a realm, right. So now you go to a new realm. So this just took us from one realm to the next realm to the next realm. Okay, makes sense. Makes, makes sense. sense? Yeah. yeah. It, so it's like, oh, it's a thousand whatever mission, but it's really not. You just have to figure out, okay, you look around the room and you find the key. And once you find the key, then I get to turn the door. But you have to touch a couple boxes and touch a couple things and open, you know, mm -hmm. the key. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's it. So now, okay, we found the key, we're open in, so now we're here. All right, so the accident prevention plan, uh, these are the requirements. Okay, your copy of your plan should be available on the work site. Here's your plan, not a previous plan. It tells here's the format, okay. Uh, the following errors are typically addressed in your plan, but besides being job specific, it must also address unusual aspects. Okay, this sounds a little bit redundant. Plan concurrence basis of work. Um, so you have to have a, a job description, description of work to be formed, location map, equipment to use, anticipated high risk activities. Okay, let's keep going. Here, it would it list. Let's go in. Um, so it talks about 
Using this as a guideline for your plans, programs, procedures, assessments, you may include the following items. So here, Brandon, it's telling you if these things apply to your project, these should go into your plan. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So really, you, you have to look at your job and say, <clears throat> uh, fatigue management, right? Are people gonna get tired? Does that need to go in my plan? Okay, uh, site sanitation, housekeeping, medical support, bloodborne pathogens, exposure control. And really what happens is, that's why they say you have a approved uh, safety person put this together because that's okay. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. Now I'm going to do you a big favor, Brandon, because I just happen to have an accident prevention plan. <laughs> Laying around. Oh, that's nice. So I can show you. So I'm going to do you a really big favor and I'm going to pull up Evan call accident prevention plan that I've used on jobs in the past. Uh, uh, um. And then that way you can actually see it and you can have a basis from which to build. Because it, it does help to have a foundation, right? Foundation is definitely important. Yeah, because, what ha you know, here you go. All right, Evan Carr. All right, accident prevention planning, hazards control measures. All right, this one is, let me get another one. All right, now this is okay. When you look at this, um, what they call this is an activity hazard analysis, uh, action prevention, accident prevention plan, hazard control measures. Uh, if you look here, you see what this says? A A H A. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what this is. Accident activity hazard analysis. Makes sense. So you got it. Now let's talk, let's go over what they use. The activity hazard analysis, it says no work will begin on the activity until the activity hazard analysis has been accepted by the project specific activity hazards. Uh, what it does is it says it defines the work sequence, anticipated hazards, conditions, equipment, materials, personnel, control measures to be implemented to eliminate or reduce each hazard. And so I'll talk you through it. The colors. All of this, this is like basically uh, where you see probability, REC chart, risk assessment code. All of that is really like a, like a cover sheet. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really change. The only change is, is you put in the location, the contract, the date prepared, who prepared it. it Makes sense? So that top yeah. just a cover sheet. You don't actually change any of that information. So no need to, no need to change that. What you start putting in is the actual activities, the hazards, and the controls. Okay? Now, the activities are the things that you're going to do on the job. The hazard is what type of hazard happens if you were to do this. The controls are what do you do to prevent that from happening. And then EM385 is where you reference the section in here that you are using uh, to determine the controls. Oh man, that's like a science project. <laughs> right. Like variables and like, you know, control variables. And right. That yeah. Right. The thing about it, you do not, again, Brandon, this is not for everyone. So, so that's why I encourage people to work with bigger organizations because you as a consultant, you're not supposed to be doing this. <laughs> like this is the company that you work for, and, and by the way, this is a five million dollar project. So yes, it's going to be a lot of stuff. But on a on a on a on a million, I'll show you an example on a million dollar project or less. You don't have this kind this level of scrutiny. Mm. But when you are working on an entire parking garage that can fall down on people, <laughs> does that make sense? Like yeah, you might need to know what's what's, might need what's going to know on. Stuff, right. 
Uh, and, 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 and when you look at it, it really makes sense. So this is the one that I prepared for my project here in Wichita, Kansas, 2015. Um, I actually wrote this whole thing myself. And what, what we, we use cranes, we use trucks, we use forklifts, uh, rigging steel. So when you, when that's, what that is, is you know how the stuff is on the ground and you tie a rope around it and fly it up in the air? Yeah. yeah that. <laughs> you think that might be a little dangerous? Just a tad bit. Just a tad okay. bit. Just a tad okay. Bit. Uh, setting up structural members in place. So, so let's just go through this one because this is really cool. Because a lot of times people don't think about this. And what this does is it gets you to think about the hazard before it comes. So, for example, when we are connecting bolts together, you could get pinched. If you're connecting two, two big steel beams, right? Have you ever had mm -hmm. your finger pinched on something? Like, you, like oh. someone throws a desk on your hand? Definitely. Drawer, right? Yeah. Same thing. Imagine if you have these two big steel beams up in the air and you're connecting them to, to bolt them together. You could, those are, there's, you gotta be careful for what they call pinch points, right? So if you're connecting these, these big flying beams, I'll give you a visual. So you're in the air, right? And you're trying to connect this, the, these beams together like this <laughs> and bolt them, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. You can see how you could get pinched. I could definitely see how that would <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's what happens. Uh, let's see. All right, so, so we talked about that. All right, and then, so connectors shall position themselves allow mobility to avoid incoming pieces. Uh, use properties of hand signals, tag ropes, pay attention, and then spud wrenches and pull pins. Uh, also, only one connector shall give signals to the crane operator to make sure his partner is clear. Now, it seems like common sense stuff, but if two people are giving signals, Brandon, hey, 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 this way, the guy's over here is like, hey, hey, go down, go down. Can you see how that could be confusing? <laughs> I, I can definitely see the confusion in it. <laughs> and then also, can you see how, um, because the two people are giving signals, the guy that's up there connecting this thing could get hit by a flying object or something. So that's just, it's like, but, but I did not have to think of all of these things. I just had to note them. They're in the manual. So if we go in this man, if we go in, well, they're not in this particular case. They weren't in this manual. It's a different manual. Let me see. Bum, bum, bum. Um, but all of this information, I didn't invent it. It came out of the manuals. So you just had to find it. Fair. Yeah. So it's not like um, I didn't. I'm not creating these information. I'm, yeah, you didn't sit here and think about the worst thing that could possibly happen. No, right? no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So let's let's try and search for one of these. Twenty-seven dot F dot eighteen. Let me see if that one's here. Yeah, see, I think these didn't come out of this particular manual. They came out of another manual. Let me see. These look like these manuals. So this one, oh, all right. This PDF version is not sorted like our other one. That stinks. All right, but look, okay. Um, U.S. Army Corps Engineers Safety Inspection Checklist abbrevi Abbreviated Accident Prevention Plan. Here's their example of their accident prevention plan checklist. Mm. Let's look at it. All right, location, facility, 
This guy serves as a guide only, does not replace the limit and need to comply with the requirements in the manual. If service item description, plan preparer. So when they tell you to do your checklist according to this manual, this to me, when they're looking at your, your accident prevention plan, they're gonna use this checklist to see if you have all of these things in there. So you basically use a manual as a reference point. Right, right. Well, well that's good. At least you have the same information. You right. gotta. Right. But but this is how again when people say hey, and this looks like repeat information, Brandon. Oh, this is different forms. Form A two. Safety inspection list. All right, this goes through 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, and this one. Oh, here we go. Okay, so here, traffic control plan, fire prevention plan. Um, these are your accident prevention plan checklists. So these are the actual plans that go inside of here. Um, san sanitation, bloodborne pathogens, exposure controls, site plan, excess hall controls. All right, these are additional plans that go within <laughs> the main plan. You want to you now? You want to ask again about about paperwork being a beast? <laughs> okay, look how long we've been talking about this. And we still haven't even got to the plan. Um, but let's go on. I want to show you some other things. Since we're not going to spend all day on the plan. The, uh, let me help. Let me give you a, a positive light to the, all of this. Uh, on the submittal registry, and this is another reason why, by the way, Brandon, I tell people, it's not necessarily the good thing to be the prime contractor always. Because since we are the prime contractor, we have to make sure we get all of these submittals done. Now, all of them do not come from us. Our subcontractors are going to be providing a lot of this information. Ah, uh, so you wait for them sometimes because they didn't finish their side. Ah. Right. So the way that um, I'll show you. So here, and I'll zoom in. Okay, here. This is the table of contents. Division two involves demolition, asbestos, remediation. So whoever's your contractors that are handling the demolition, asbestos, remediation, they're responsible for that. Mm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So you're not, so here on the submittal register on the left side of the screen, demolition plan, that comes from a demolition contractor. Okay. Uh, 28282 oh, two, asbestos remediation. So here, these things, all of that comes from whoever's doing the asbestos remediation contractor. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 that makes sense. So you have to do all the paperwork. You just right. Need to all turn it. right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Concrete. See, I told you I was gonna make you smile. <laughs> <laughs> but but as a prime, we have to do division one. So division one is us, because all of that involves the quality control, hazardous, uh, all the initial stuff to get the project going. Mm -hmm. Now, and then it, so that's division one. So then again, number, division three, concrete. So that's the concrete guys division. So let's go to our registry here. There's actually no G, so there's only one G here, which is this one. And so, so three three zero fifty three. So that's the cast in place concrete guy. So he's only responsible for submitting one thing on that. Uh, three zero one. Okay, nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, here. So we, for for the concrete guy. All right, he's responsible for this, the mixed design data. Concrete mixture proportions, compressive strength, slump, 
Let's keep going. Okay, he's responsible for these things here. Um, and what 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 we had our team doing, uh, the girls in the office was, they would send this to the concrete guy, and then when he sends back in his paperwork, we then make sure that we have all these things on Mark G. So we were now just checking the what people sent us. Fair. Okay, so he just yeah he just sent it out and collected it, collected it and put it together. No, no, he sent it back to us together. We review it to make sure it meets all the marks. So let's go and look at it. So here under 034500 and then paragraph 1-12-1. One dash one dash one. So let's go in, let's search 034500. All right, there you go. Takes you to that section. Uh, another thing that I will say that I use for myself when I'm doing this, uh, let's say I'm the concrete guy, I would take out my section and I would mm -hmm. have my section on the pages. I would not have any of this other stuff. So I won't have a thousand pages. I'll have like 50 pages. So I would only have my section when reviewing everything. Make sense? It makes so you're sense. Confused, you're not looking at a whole, like you're not, you don't have all this stuff on there. I would just use only have my section listed. And then uh, let's go in. See how slow it is? Yeah. Because it's all those pages. So if you take out your section and only focus on your section, which, let's look at it. By the way, at the bottom of the page, it tells you if you're still in that section, 034500. Okay, and look, you end it right here. So it goes from, so this is page to six. So it's only 21 pages, his section. See that? Yeah, I see that. So that section is only 21 pages. So just pull that out. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? Like, just pull that out. Yeah, pull your section out. Yeah. That's That's pull your section out. Out. I would just print this one section and have it on my desk. So let's stay in line with this particular spec section. 0345. Okay, that's 0330. By the way, they are in order. So um, if you get past a section, they are in chronological order. Or numerical order, sorry. Um, here, 0345. All right, so now under 0345, you've got to do 1.2, 1 1.2, 12.1. So if you look at it, it's, I mean, everything goes in order. 1.2, then it should go 1.3, 1.4. You get me? Yeah, I see. No, so, come, yeah. You know, it's, it's not really hard to follow. It's, it's all in order. You just have to know how to read it. And we're looking at 1.12.1. 1, 1. All right, 1.12.1, 1. precast drawings. All right, that's your G, precast drawings. All consistent, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, all consistent, one, two, one. I'm gonna close now, have, you, have you ever ran to a contractor that was unable to do his paperwork? Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, all of them. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so what do you do in that instance? We help them. Yeah, okay. But also, but the big companies, they, they, uh, they, Start fining you for not doing paperwork. Oh, you get fined for that? Oh, wow. Yeah, they start. Yeah, because you're delaying the project now. <laughs> because it makes sense. You can't start until all this is submitted and approved. Yeah. Well, yeah, they need that back ASAP. I mean, all right. So now here, but we help them in terms of we explain this. And this is why mm -hmm. it's good to teach your staff or like, for example, what we're doing here is we're making a lesson because you can teach your staff how to understand this, to be able to explain it to a small subcontractor who's maybe, you know, he's in the field, he's a worker, 
He's not a mm-hmm. painter. So if you can teach your staff how to do this, what, like we taught our girls in the office, then what they do is when I gave this to my staff, if someone calls and say, hey, look, I don't know how to do it. They go to the section. So let's say it's a concrete guy. You're the concrete guy. One of my mm-hmm. girls goes to the section. She says, okay, all right, Brandon, this is what I need from you. Um, I need these precast drawings. Um, and I need to show this information, dimensions, section, details. And I need mm-hmm. to comply with ACI SP66. Because really, look, that it's only freaking four paragraphs what they're asking for. Yeah, yeah, it's just that part right there. That's it. Once we got down to all of this stuff, it was just this. That's all they asked for. <laughs> and then 2.3, let's go down to 2.3. Point three, all right. They're asking for uh, two point three cast and bed items and connectors. All right. So they want to know if you have any of these types of inserts, these concrete inserts, threaded inserts, slotted inserts. If you have any of these angles, any of these fasteners. So my question to you, Mr. Concrete Guy. Hey, on this job, are you going to be using threaded inserts? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to be using threaded inserts. Okay. Where do you buy them from? I buy them from such and such supply store. Okay. Go to the supply store and get me the specifications on these inserts. Give me the mm-hmm. picture. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can do that. That's easy. Why didn't you just say that? <laughs> Make sense, Brandon? Yeah. This they don't know how to read guys it. The way. They don't know how to read it. Yeah. So then you get on the phone and you say, hey, uh, by the way, do you also have any slotted type inserts? They're going to know what a slotted insert is, right? Because they, it's part of their job when they do the concrete. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask you this. On the job, are you using any clip angles? Yeah, we're going to be using the L angles, the this angles, the that angles. Okay. Hey, where do you buy those angles from? Oh, we buy the angles. Well, they come from this place because this place is cheaper than the other place. Okay, call the place, find out the stuff on the angles, right? So mm-hmm. now, let's just, you and I, as an example, we can walk through, and I'll show you. So let's just pull up ourselves. Let's type in clip angles. Just search clip angles. And what do you see on the screen here? Look, you see these angles? Clip angle, clip mm-hmm. angle right? Mm-hmm. Let's go. That's a clip angle. Clip angles and steel. It gives me paperwork on it. All right. Now, here's a clip angle, right, Brandon? Yep. All right. Now, let's go back to what this asks for. Under your clip angles, does it comply with ASTM A36 steel? You see that? Yep. Over here, our composition is ASTM A100. Does it comply? We're looking for A36. Let me see. A36. This clip angle does not comply with A36. I can't find nope. it. On the sheet. All right. So it complies with ASTM A103, 653, but not A36. So then this would not be accepted. Follow? So you see that is? Uh, yeah, no, you just check it. You just basically match it up. <laughs> I'm just matching it you up. You know what they're asking for, though. You have to know what they're asking for. So then when someone, so if you were to receive this from your concrete guy, this document, he goes, here, this is the clipping I'm using. What's going to happen? And that's the wrong, you got to get another clip angle. That's it. This is the wrong clip angle. You can't use these clip angles on this job. Yeah. Requirements. But do you understand how you could easily, like, you can answer anyone's questions because all you do is you're, you have to learn how to use this book to, as a reference guide to go in and find the information. And then you can mm-hmm. answer anybody's questions because that's all the government is doing. They're checking to make sure your clip angle meets this requirement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that, clip, mm-hmm. that clip angle don't meet it. Sorry, dude. Nope. Can't use that one, yeah. Can't use that one. All right, let's go look at this one. Okay, here's some heavy gauge clip angles. 
Here's an angle. Okay. All right. This one says galvanized. All right. Drawings, related products, catalog pages. All right. Let's go in. Do they have any technical requirements on it? I'll tell you what, I'll even do you a better one. Let's go in and let's just type in clip angles, right? That meet the requirement. Nice. A yeah. A36. Boom. Now, if you notice something about this, you see how thick those are? Yeah. <laughs> That's those are different. the difference. You see now? Yeah, it's not the same as the little, little <laughs> small metal ones. That's a whole steel. That's a whole steel you know. bar. That's why it's different, Brandon. Because the government don't want you to put that rinky dink thing on there. Definitely makes sense. Now, you get what I'm saying? Like, you're like, that's the difference. That thing that we just pulled up. Oh, that's nothing. <laughs> that's paper. <laughs> okay, you can put that. To this, all right. Look, you see the difference. That's a thirty-six clip angle, steel angle. So, and isn't this kind of cool though? In, in reality, like, no, it is cool. You're learning. It's, it's a reason. There's a methodology behind this stuff. So when people are like, oh my gosh, why do they make us do all this stuff? Well, because someone's got to show up with this. Right when they should have had this. Mm. Yep, <laughs> that's gonna be the wrong thing. It's gonna be the wrong thing. And what do you think? But when you show, I would say when you show the wrong thing, was that like the, the contract's canceled, basically? Oh, they they'll fine. kick you off the job. They'll kick you off for that. They'll yeah. Like, uh, uh, we have a someone, one of our, uh, <laughs> one of our. I hate that. Someone who's on my LinkedIn that um, is, he, he reached out to me. His father was selling airplane parts. Um, mm -hmm. He was getting, he was doing it. Cause he was, he was supposed to be providing like this heavy steel and he was getting a cheaper metal to make the airplane parts. Mm. He's in prison right now. Oh man. So that, if that gives you an indication. Yes. Uh, yeah. What do you, What do you think he deserves to be, Brandon? If he intentionally did that, I mean, it's air airplane part. That's 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 it, big. That's big stuff. That's not little things. That's, right. And this is for uh, the landing gear for airplane. Oh no 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 no! Also, you're lying. That's a that's a big part. Lying. Like, it's not like he did it. He signed a contract. You know, like no no. He intentionally went and got cheaper parts. Intentionally, he intentionally got cheaper metals so he could save money. I don't know how you unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you unintentionally do the stuff there. <laughs> well, because people say I didn't know. You know, people always come with that story they didn't know. Oh yeah. yeah. But going back to this middle, so now you see, okay, that's section three. So that covers those guys, right? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so uh, the staff would basically make sure that. All, you met all these requirements. And that's the same thing for every section, every division. Uh, here, if we look at the plumbing guys uh, in 22, division 22, we're to go to mm -hmm. and go to like division 22 right here. So ask you for plumbing system, vibration absorbing system, and then you just go ahead and look for it. So it's, you know, it's division 22. Right there, you go. And it's, but you can see, like how you see how quickly you can search this. It's not, they're not like, like, dude. All right, the guy's like, Brandon, I don't understand this. You're like, hold on one second. You pull this up. You pull this up. You're like, all right, you're plumbing. You're in 22. Yeah. All right. Now we're in 22. Let's go to right here, 3.2.1. Okay. So again, I actually what I do, Brandon, is I make. All of these divisions, I make them PDFs. So then I could search them easy. So then I won't be searching in this one big document. I'd have a list of them already on my computer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then I would just open up that file. So then we'd already be there. Yeah, that's that specific section. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here. All right. They're on a 3.2.1.
See how slow it's moving? Because it's too much, too many pages. <laughs> it's like a thousand pages. It is a thousand pages. All right, here you go. Three dot two. Come on. There it is. Plumbing system. So you're following plumbing system while the screen is moving on us. All right. It should be in accordance with ICC, IPC, IMB, PC. That's it. They so could do a peppermint test or you could do a smoke test. Peppermint test. That's cool. <laughs> All right. And that's what they asked for. That's it. That section is one paragraph. Think about it. That makes sense. There's a lot of paperwork, but it's, it's really you know, you get to know what you're looking for. You can't obviously just be reading everything. You know why it's a lot? Because this document encompasses everybody's work. That's why it's a lot. But if you break it down to just your work, it's, this section might be what, 13 pages? That's it. You know, it's like, okay, here you go, 15 pages in the section. You can go through 15 pages, Brandon. Anybody can go through 15 pages. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and that's and that's that's really um, so that's that's really you know that's to that. So I just kind of want to give you an example of what you know walking through the registry and and then we we'll have to submit. And then when you actually go in and submit it, this is what the log is. So now I'm sure uh, this makes sense to you more. Yes, yes, definitely. Now you see the spec section, the submittal description, the date you sent it. And then the number, it's just a numbering format to say, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then that way they're like, hey, we approve numbers, you know, one through eight, ten through fifteen. You get me? And then you mm -hmm, can hear mm -hmm. on the number which one was not approved. Because it's it is a lot harder to say, we approve spec section 0145000013. <laughs> So it's more of a, a ease of, of saying type of thing as opposed to anything else.